it is not uncommon at all these days for you to be playing a game of Bed Wars and just have the person on an enemy island just start running towards you while placing blocks beneath them. A few years ago this was really only possible to do with cheats, but these days people have de developed clicking... <laughs> Sounds so dumb to say all that. <laughs> Clicking techniques that allow them to click their mice at rates so ridiculous that they can pretty much just run backwards and place blocks beneath them while playing Minecraft. The ridiculousness of that is quite apparent, but obviously this is now possible and pretty popular to do. Back in the day, click speed didn't matter nearly as much as people make it out to have mattered in Minecraft PvP. Everybody was pretty much playing survival games, ultra hardcore, or HCF, or I guess if you're playing HCF you're probably spending more time on a practice server. Click speed mattered, but it didn't matter that much. The reason it mattered is because Minecraft has attack delays. Even 1.8 PvP has attack delays. Obviously it's atrocious in 1.9+, plus, but in 1.8 Minecraft there is attack delays. When you hit someone in Minecraft there's a... Oh, how many ticks is it? Let's see if Reddit's correct. Okay, so as soon as you hit someone in Minecraft, there's a 10 tick or half second hit delay. Uh, so what you, what your goal is, is essentially to, you want to click in the, because Minecraft updates usually at like 20 ticks per second, I believe. So what, what you want to do is you want to hit let's say you hit somebody on the first like available tick. So then they're not going to be able to be hit for the next 10 ticks or whatever you want to hit them on the next available tick that's when the server will update that you do it so when people are doing a pot pvp or whatever and they're just trading hits over and over again they're probably hitting each other on either close to or the exact same tick it's when you get a hit on the first tick and your opponent gets one on the second or third or whatever after the uh damage is reset that's when you start winning fights that's why click speed mattered because it's nearly impossible to perfectly time your clicks every half second so people were just like well I'm just gonna click you know 10 or 20 times per second now obviously past click if you want to if that's your strategy rather than timing it if your strategy is to do that there's no real point in clicking anything above 20 CPS but clicking 20 CPS would also require that your clicking is perfectly intermittent meaning at literally every 20th of a second you're clicking like on the dot and that's just not feasible that's that's not how human beings work cps didn't really matter back in those days uh if you if you're getting above 10 your movement mattered way more w tapping s tapping strafing your aim stuff like that was more important than clicking more than 10 cps and if you're doing uhc your your bucket work your rods stuff like that utility mattered a lot too obviously not so much in pot pvp that was all based on movement click speed and ping but nowadays we have 200 ping gods so i mean it's, it's clearly ping isn't nearly the issue people make it out to be when sky wars was released it pulled a lot of people out of whatever game modes they were playing at the time so your uhc players usually got big into sky wars uh pop pvpers a lot of them hung out kept pot pvping but would start playing sky wars especially when ranked sky wars came out because bling easy views the sg crowd also swapped over to sky wars pretty quickly most of them had already switched to uhc anyway so obviously there's still people that play survival games but i mean that's that's a dying community i guess it's, it's small we can just say it's small after all this everybody's moved over to sky wars at this point now bridging matters basically it doesn't matter nearly as much as it does for bed wars because minecraft modern minecraft pvp people's skill is practically determined by how well they can bridge at this point i think that's kind of sad personally but uh, I digress. We're looking at Sky Wars now, uh, and the standard bridging technique for that was just the standard speed bridge. This was pretty easy to do. You just hold down right click and intermittently crouch uh, so that you can catch yourself on the next block. Not a big deal. Pretty easy to do. Easy to learn. Took me like a day to learn when I was first getting into Sky Wars. And obviously the rest of the game is very technical. There's block placement. So you can do all the kinds of fun block traps and whatever, but you have to you have to think out of the box to be good at sky wars because no matter how well you know the map it's obviously it's minecraft that map is constantly changing so you have to be able to adapt to whatever situations come in your way and that's why i liked it so much i have like two or three thousand sky wars wins or something like that I, I played it way too much when i was younger thousands of wasted hours of my youth sky wars didn't really increase the n like the necessity to click fast right because the standard bridge that everybody did was a speed bridge at like, the highest click speed you would need would be the jitter bridge and you can it was called a jitter bridge for a reason it was because you jitter click your right click button and that was enough generally like if you wanted to do that really fast that take like 
12 to 14 CPS consistently, something like that. I just, you, you probably don't even need that. You could probably time it with like six if you got really good at that, but I don't think anybody ever really bothered to. At least not that anybody that's worth noting. It wasn't really until Bedwars that these ridiculous click speeds became just normalized. When Bedwars was released, pretty much everybody quit playing Skywars. Well, I, not obviously not everybody. There's still like 8,000 players online or something like that. But compared to like the 30k plus that Bedwars was getting, it, it's, it, it felt like the game mode that I actually liked was dying. Bedwars removed all the projectiles. I like the projectiles, but they were gone now, and that that really that's kind of what contributed to it making me quit. It was the fact that I felt like nobody really cared about Skywars anymore, and frankly, I hated Bedwars. No projectiles. Everything's about block placement. You can't get easy kills. It it lifted noobs up and brought skilled players down, essentially, by completely changing the meta for everything. It just wasn't fun. But to this day, Bedwars is fun with friends, but I would never play it. Uh, as its own game mode it's it's okay at best obviously that's a personal opinion after the release of bed wars people quickly realized that uh if they were able to bridge faster than just the standard speed bridge that all pretty much anybody who was competitive had learned to do at that point if they learned to bridge faster than that they'd have a huge advantage on pretty much everybody else and that's when we started seeing people doing breezily bridges at the time breezily bridges were like a really new concept nobody really even knew what that was the idea of walking backwards and slowing your movement speed with a and d was you know, pretty cool uh i'll admit it, it was neat to see that people were doing it but i never bothered to learn it because the standard because it was so inconsistent there there was no way you could actually apply this in an actual game consistently and get good enough at it that you'd do it like every time the same way you would with a standard speed bridge so i never bothered to learn any of these extra bridging techniques i just know how they work from research and the fact that I still keep up with the community sometimes. People figured out Breezley Bridging and eventually got so good at it they, that they could do it consistently, and the logical progression of that was God Bridging. Breezley Bridging could be done by jitter or butterfly clicking. I'm not sure if God Bridging can or not. Uh, it probably can. The God Bridging was basically the idea of just walking backwards, usually at an angle to make placing the blocks easier, so you'd hold uh, S and D or A and S on your keyboard while at a probably 45-ish degree angle to the blocks and then you just walk backwards and uh, jitter click or these days probably jet a drag click so initially god bridges were probably done with jitter and butterfly clicking and they were really inconsistent but with the advent of drag clicking which is spoiler alert how people click 100 cps plus in minecraft with the advent of that god bridging became a lot more consistent to the point that people are oftentimes doing god bridging in game in bed wars games uh today there's people that just standard bridge that way and because they can do it fairly consistently due to drag clicking as far as bridging techniques go the only one other one that i know of that's like viable that's humanly possible like consistently is uh tele bridging and that's essentially the idea of jumping off of your bridge and then block clutching using drag clicking so it's usually like a three or four block block clutch off the end of your bridge and then just turning around and jumping again and the reason this is faster than god bridging is because jumping well, first of all, you're jumping forwards for most of this, right? So that's automatically faster because you're going forwards rather than walking backwards. And then combine that with the fact that when you're in the air in Minecraft, when you jump in Minecraft, you have like higher momentum than when you're just uh, walking on the ground. So if you ever wondered why anybody who's decent at Minecraft is sprint jumping everywhere, that's why. To consistently tally bridge, it became pretty... It, not many people can consistently do it. I'm not even sure if it's something anybody can do consistently, but... What people will do is they pretty much have to drag click because the ridiculous lengths that they're block clutching from. The only way to get CPS high enough to place enough blocks fast enough to get under you is pretty much to drag click since blocks aren't limited the same way that hitting someone in Minecraft is. There isn't nearly the same delay. Another fun fact, block placements in Minecraft are actually on the client side instead of on the server side. So even if you don't have a connection to the server, you can place blocks and generally jump around and do stuff on them. But uh, as soon as the server, th this is like why you're lagging with no connection to the server, but as soon as the server realizes, it'll get rid of all the blocks and then you just do craziness ensues. Just a fun fact. I thought I'd throw that in there. But yeah, the way drag clicking works, this is how people actually get those ridiculously high clicks per second. So the way drag clicking works is basically people will take a piece of tape. They don't necessarily have to do this depending on the surface they're drag clicking on, but it like to do it on any mouse you generally need a piece of tape and you get the stickiness of the tape off on whatever one of your mouse buttons you want to drag click 
And then after that, you just have to find the nice balance of pressure on your mouse and then drag your finger on the mouse in, a, in such a way that it causes the mouse to click. And doing this, depending on your mouse's debounce time, can uh, get you upwards of 100 CPS. Something that's important to discuss here is mouse debounce time. There's something called double clicking. It's kind of, what's, what's the best way to explain this? It's, it's, it's a sort of a silly thing to uh, try to discuss because there, there's no real such thing as a double click because that implies that you press once and your mouse clicks twice. Well, what I was reading uh, based on mouse debounce time uh, is that mouse debounce time is the idea of preventing double clicks, but it doesn't really make any sense given that what essentially mouse debounce time is, is the amount of time that your mouse locks you from giving any more inputs to that one button. Let's say your mouse's debounce time is 20 milliseconds. If you click your mouse, uh, your mouse won't let you click that same, even if you click that same button again, your mouse won't register the input for 20 milliseconds. It won't let you send another input for 20 milliseconds. That's bad for Minecraft, right? Because you're limiting yourself to, uh, if, if your mouse debounce time is uh, 20 milliseconds, then the most CPS you could ever get is uh, 50, right? So what people have been doing is they've been buying uh, mice that allow you to change that debounce time or have really low debounce time. For example, the Glorious Model O has a a, lit a literal slider where you can change your demounts time between 4 milliseconds and 16 milliseconds. Obviously, Minecraft players want that at 4 milliseconds, which allows for a... Uh, it'd be 5 times the uh, 20 millisecond demounts time if it's at 4, so that would allow for 250 um, clicks per second. That's obviously like a max. It can't go any higher than that. Essentially, what that does is it allows for drag clicking to hit ridiculous, ridiculous clicks per second. So, you so you'll be looking at... Uh, 100 CPS, which has been observed, but like in gameplay, people have been doing that while playing Bed Wars or Bridge 1v1 servers or whatever. Usually, it's German people doing this, just because I don't I don't know why Germans are so good at why are they so good at bridging? It doesn't make any I don't understand. That's essentially the history leading up to how drag clicking came to be, why it got popular, kind of how it works, how mouse debounce time works. The amount of misinformation on mouse debounce is ridiculous. Why why does nobody know what this is? It's it's, it's literally just the delay between when you like how, how long you have to wait before you can click your mouse again it's, it's so that you don't like accidentally if your finger like spazzes out on your mouse you don't like quintillion click your windows icon or something and just open like 40 chrome tabs that, that's like that's why it's there <laughs> obviously that's not good for minecraft but the uh, misintermission floating around on that was ridiculous another fun bridging method was actually made by teddy nader he's kind of like the founding father of modern bridging techniques he kinda, it seems like he just came up with everything i'm pretty and he definitely even if he didn't come up with it he definitely popularized drag clicking but one of the things he did was andromeda bridging which is this concept uh, when when you're playing minecraft if you have if you're in a two block space and you spam your space bar it's pretty much the fastest you can move in the game without speed modification Notifications, so like potions or whatever. But what he came up with was, was the idea of placing, basically making two bridges. You make a two block, you make two bridges, one on top of you and one below you. So what you do is you place the block below you, then you place a block above you, jump, bang your head off the block on top, land on the block on the bottom, place another one, and then place another block on, on top of your head, and then jump again. And he actually executed this for like a short period of time and then looped the footage in a video. It's absolutely insane. Uh, so this, if you ever see like a speedrun or something of Minecraft, I'd imagine this is how they'd be bridging if they had enough blocks for it. I just, if, if, if you're making a task, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be a normal speedrun. It's basically humanly impossible to consistently do. But if you're making a task, you probably want your bridging to be Andromeda bridging. Just a fun fact there, I suppose. That's how drag clicking works. That's why Minecraft players drag click. It's basically just because it allows them to do all the techniques that the cool kids do all day <laughs> it's been so long since i played minecraft seriously i can't i can't <laughs> dude i used to want to stay up to like 3 a.m just to play minecraft uh my parents would never let me i was always so upset that's all i know anyway good luck bye